One of the important new strategies which this um, COVID-19 pandemic is focusing attention on is how do you stop people uh, becoming ill and developing myeloma in the first place? And so this leads you to um, want to treat people in the early stages of disease. And there have been a number of clinical trials that have uh, published data on treating early in the, in the disease at the smoldering myeloma stage. And largely, they, they've been successful. But then recently, the definitions have changed. And we have a, a new group of smoldering myeloma that is generally um, more benign than what has been included in trials. And the question is, how do you accurately define high risk early myeloma stroke, smoldering myeloma, so that you can initiate treatment? So we assembled a series of 80 smoldering myeloma cases and did genome sequencing on them and tried to gain lessons about who would behave well, who would behave badly if you had that data. And so the things that we show are that um, the known drivers of disease are less frequent, but if you have a KRAS mutation at the time you have smoldering myeloma, that uh, increases your likelihood of transforming, so makes you a high risk case. And intervention for those cases then becomes a serious option. Um, we didn't find any correlation with translocations to MIC, um, but that's, I think, because the definitions have changed. We looked at signatures active early in the disease phase, and um, nothing really changes between smoldering myeloma and myeloma. But one of the key features we found was that most cancers are made up of more than one subclone, and this is called intraclonal heterogeneity. And using the sequencing, you can monitor the size of those clones over time and see if there's any increase in a subclone. And what we found was by doing this sequentially, if all of the clones were stable, the patient would be stable for many years. But if you saw one of those subclones increasing in size, ultimately, maybe two years later, that patient would progress uh, to myeloma that needed treatment. So what this means is that there's now a way of monitoring patients over time where if the clones are stable, you do nothing, you continue to monitor. But if you see a clone that's increasing in size, you can say, okay, this patient is now high risk. It's destined to develop clinical disease. So maybe this is a good time where we can treat that patient. And the whole concept underlying this is if you treat cancer early, patients do better. So it's good if you pick up pre-cancer early because now we're in a position to monitor it actively to, present, to prevent clinical disease occurring. I think this is going to be a step forward as we move towards cancer prevention rather than cancer treatment 